I'm moving away from aerospace engineering. <laughs> Okay, okay, it's not that big of a deal, but what am I actually going to be doing? Well, I've started my own OnlyFans. No, just, just kidding. This September, I'm actually joining a company in London as a graduate software engineer. And before I get hate from the internet from abandoning aerospace engineering, let me explain why I'm making this switch. So if you do go on to become an aerospace engineer, well then your growth really is directly connected to your employer because you can't really learn practical skills without being employed at an aerospace company. This means your choice of whoever you decide to work for is super, super important. Naturally, the best companies will provide the best training for their employees and then in turn produce the best engineers. So if you can't get into these top companies, then it can be tricky to become a top engineer. I mean, I guess you could call me a control freak, but I sort of like to have everything under my control. And if I have to rely on an employer to improve my progress in the industry, then, you know, I don't really want that. Okay, I mean, you could theoretically improve your practical skills by yourself and don't need an employer. However, this probably is only realistic if you have, you know, daddy's cash so you can build your own jet engine in your garden. Daddy always gave me everything I wanted. Switching jobs is also a problem within the aerospace engineering industry because in the UK, most of the aerospace companies are spread out around the UK. For example, if you want to be switching careers to improve your career much faster, this is what it might look like. So first you get a graduate role with Airbus in Broughton and then after a couple of years you get another job offer at MBDA in Stevenage and then another two years after that you might want to go to Skyrora, which is in Edinburgh. See you have to relocate multiple times within the country just to advance through your career in the first few years working in the industry. Relocation can be very costly and also it doesn't help that you have to make new friendships and also you have to build more relationships with the people in your new locations. This does make it harder to build high quality relations with the people in your industry. Comparing this to tech and software, in a city like London, for example, majority of the top tech and software companies are all located in roughly the same area. And so it's not much problems with switching between companies in that industry. As you've just seen, most of the aerospace companies are not even in big cities. I just mentioned Airbus is in Broughton, MBDA is in Stevenage, and Skyrora is in Edinburgh. I personally wouldn't like to live in a small town or city, but instead live in somewhere more like London. But how do you know that you don't like living in a small town or city? Well, I was born and raised in a small city called Stoke-on-Trent. This is Stoke-on-Trent. Look at the beauty and magnificentness of the city. Such an exquisite taste to the eye with its luscious architecture and beautiful surroundings. Anyway, larger cities just offer you so much more than smaller ones. In London, there's just so much more choice of who you can and want to be friends with. One thing, you know, you learn when you're growing up is that you don't have to actually be friends with the people you're most with. So for example, you know, when you're in school, you're probably friends with the people in the same class as you. But, you know, you're only friends with them because they're just there. Maybe you don't even have stuff in common. In your adult world, you don't have to be friends with just the people you see every day. You can build friendships with people you might see even like once a month. And in big cities, you're just more likely to find people who, you know, are into the same stuff as you, have the same ambitions as you, and also have the same motivation and dream that you guys all want to achieve. Remote work is so much more possible with a career in software engineering than it is in aerospace. Because as an aerospace engineer, you're likely to be working on physical things and therefore have to be living close to the factory or the company that you're working at. You know, many software engineering roles are remote and actually more and more software engineering roles are going remote since the pandemic. And this is a promising thing if you want to have the flexibility of where you want to work from. As a software engineer, I'll have an increased likelihood in being able to choose where I work from. But also, I'll have an increased likelihood of knowing the technical skills required to start my own company. Starting a business with a software engineering background 
is super helpful because software businesses are technically the easiest to start because software is not that expensive to write. If you have an aerospace engineering background and you want to start a aerospace company, then you probably have to be already loaded with cash. And it's likely that you're not going to be so if you're just going to progress through your career as an aerospace engineer. If you look at a company like SpaceX, it requires huge amounts of money to get going. And in fact, there's like a, a small joke in the aerospace sector where it's like, if you want to make millions from a rocket company, then you need to spend a few billion. Money is super important when you're progressing through your career for many reasons. Ultimately, it can give you the opportunity to learn new skills, travel, and it also provides you with more freedom. The software industry allows you to have the potential to earn a lot of money through working at a fan company or a startup which has a lot of stock options. Even though people are like, oh, money is not everything, but you know, for me who thinks very logically, it seems like a stupid idea to put the same amount of brain power but be paid less for it. I'm not saying that I'm just doing software engineering for the money and I actually dislike it. I actually do enjoy software engineering, but if it pays more than aerospace, then why would I choose to go into aerospace, right? If you enjoyed this video, you're bound to like this one here where I talk about my views as to why I think coding and knowing how to code is important for any type of engineer.